What's up guys, my name is Matt Stone and welcome to my channel. Today's video is brought to you by The Vintage Gentleman. You can check out great necklaces and men's accessories like these by clicking the link in the description. I do get a small commission from all sales driven through that link, so please help me out. Today I'd like to help you guys get an inside look at what it was like recording with Elvis inside of the recording studio, namely the Guitar Man sessions of 1967. Now this session was originally supposed to take place on August 22nd, 1967 in Los Angeles. They wanted to get Elvis out of Nashville, out of Studio B where he was comfortable and bring him into Los Angeles to try to modernize his sound a little bit. They also brought in a new guy to work the session. His name was Jim Malloy and he was a guy to work the board along with Felton Jarvis who was Elvis's new record producer and he was going to help hire musicians, he was going to help select material, stuff that was originally reserved for Elvis and RCA alone. So this guy was being given a lot of power over the session to help influence it and try to make Elvis the best he possibly could be. They were also gonna be bringing in Billy Strange, who was a session guitar player to work on the session, who was supposed to really bring in a great sound and a great arrangement to the session. Now the aim of the session was pretty straightforward. They needed four or five bonus tracks for the Clambic album, and they needed two singles, and they were also looking for an Easter single if they could pull it off. Now, Billy Strange was running all over the place to try to learn all these new songs that he had never heard of that Elvis was just pulling out of nowhere and telling him, go learn this, go learn that. Well, actually, it was Charlie telling him to do this because Elvis would have Charlie tell everybody, uh, give everybody assignments. Now, some of the songs that were supposed to be recorded for the session, I found really interesting because the only one of these songs that actually was recorded in this session is Guitar Man. Everything else was recorded at a later date. So, um, After Loving You by Della Reese, originally Eddie Arnold, um, who was a Colonel Parker alumni client, um, was supposed to be recorded. That was recorded in American Sound in 1969. The Wonder of You was never done in the studio. It was actually done in 1970 live on stage, but on the On Stage album, and that one was released as a single, number one hit in the UK, top 10 in the United States. Now, both of those songs have been strong contenders the previous May in 1966. They were also looking for The Fool, which was recorded in the Nashville Marathon Sessions in June of 1970. They were also looking for Pledging My Love, which was recorded nine years later in the Jungle Room uh, sessions, Elvis's last recording sessions, and also Born 10,000 Years Ago, which Elvis, had introduced, uh, was a, which Elvis was introduced by um, from Charlie while he was in the Army in Germany, which was also done in the Nashville Marathon Sessions in 1970. Jimmy Reed's Baby What You Want Me To Do, which was done in the 60th Comeback Special, and both the sit-down and the stand-up in June of 1968, the next year, and of course it was also part of his uh, live show in 1969, and went on to continue on spurious occasions. Lastly, he was also supposed to record Vernon's favorite song, which was From a Jack to a King, which he recorded in uh, 1969 in the American Sound Sessions as well. It was put on the Back in Memphis album, which was the leftovers from the American Sound Sessions. Now, like I said, the session was originally supposed to take place on August 22nd, 1967, but Richard Davis, a Memphis Mafia member, ran over and killed a Japanese gardener, and Colonel Parker, seeing that there might be a lawsuit coming, uh, decided that Elvis and everybody needed to get out of town for a couple days and just leave, um, and they went to Las Vegas. Um, Elvis, Joe, Priscilla, Charlie, Billy, and Gigi all went to Vegas for a couple days until they tried to sort out what was going to happen with the Japanese gardener that was run, up, run over by Richard Davis. So the session was canceled and they just went back to Memphis. It was rescheduled for Nashville September 10th, and um, Billy Strange's participation was just completely forgotten or thrown out or something because he did not work on the sessions, and the idea of recording in L.A. was also just kind of thrown out. Now, the new focus of the recording session all of a sudden fallen completely in love with the song Guitar Man by Jerry Reed, which he already really liked from the previous summer. And he really, really wanted to record the song. So um, he decided to kick off the session with Guitar Man, and he was really struggling with it because the guitar players on the session, which were um, Chip Young, uh, Charlie McCoy, and Pete Drake. Charlie McCoy was a harmonica player um, who played on Mary in the Morning, and I was born 10,000, not I was born 10,000 years ago, um, I washed my hands in muddy water, and, um, in 1970, um, he was actually recently featured on an, uh, an EP project album, if I'm not wrong, it's coming out very soon. Um, they couldn't get the guitar part right, so they brought in Jerry Reed, the original, the original guy, to play it right, because Jerry Reed used an open tuning, and he played with his fingers instead of with a pick, so it got a totally different sound. So they had to bring in Jerry, the original guy, to get the same sound that Elvis wanted that he heard in his head from the original record. 
And uh, apparently, the minute that Jerry started playing, Elvis' eyes just lit up. Elvis also decided to record a very similar song while he had Jerry in the sessions, which was Big Boss Man, which um, actually went on to be a, a bigger uh, a bigger song in hindsight. The Guitar Man, uh, in my opinion, I think Big Boss Man has been a little bit more successful. More people know that one than Guitar Man. And a very, very similar song, similar guitar tuning, and it was absolutely fantastic. They nailed the song in 11 takes, and it felt like they were about to go all night long until Freddie Beanstalk realized, oh no, I didn't get Colonel's publishing deal from Jerry for Guitar Man, which had been these kind of publishing struggles had been a problem in the past. They became a huge problem with Suspicious Minds in 1969. I've done a video on that before, but when my channel got shut down, somehow that video got lost and I can't find it anywhere, so I got to redo it. But, um, so there, there became a huge fight in the studio with actually Scotty Moore on looking. I didn't know that he was leading the session, but Scotty Moore was there as a session leader. And uh, Jerry Reed did not want to give up his publishing. He said that you wasted my time, you wasted the, mu wasted the musician's time, you wasted RCA's time, you wasted my time, you wasted Elvis' time, all that. And eventually Jerry Reed just said this, Mr. Beanstalk, I'll put it to you this way. You don't need the money, Elvis don't need the money, and I'm making more money than I can spend right now. So why don't we just forget we ever recorded the darn song? I'm substituting the word darn for other word. <laughs> but, um, so... So Jerry Reed storms out of the studio and the session just kind of hits a, a dead pause because it was fantastic and everybody just got kind of taken aback for a second at this problem. And this was the first time that politics of uh, songs really kind of entered an Elvis session for real and uh, really made a difference in everybody's mood. Before they kind of tried to keep Elvis out of it, but this time it was right in front of them. I apologize about the lighting. There's a window right here and it keeps shining out on my head, as you can see. Um, so the session is pretty lackluster from this point on. Um, everybody's mood is kind of killed. Elvis sits down at the piano and he records You'll Never Walk Alone, which was a song uh, from his favorite artist, Roy Hamilton. And it also says that he tried to mimic Jake Hess a little bit on it, who I believe was the bass singer for the Statesman, which was one of Elvis's favorite gospel groups back in the day, back in the 50s. For a moment, Chips Young and Harold Bradley tried to uh, liven the spirits up a little bit and played a few bars of High Heeled Sneakers, um, which was a 1964 Tommy Tucker hit, and uh, they tried to keep the same bluesy appeal that it worked because Elvis's voice was very raspy at this point. Um, once you go, people who aren't singers don't know, like once you go raspy, it's very hard to unrasp yourself for a couple hours. I find that problem all the time. If I sing a 1969 set, I cannot go to a 1973 set. It does not work. It does not work. Um, it takes a long time to come back. And uh, so they went into High Heel Sneakers, and of course Elvis uh, starts out with a little bit of um, Ode to Billy Joe. Well, I was out chopping cotton, and my brother was bailing hay. And um, they do High Heel Sneakers, and I actually like High Heel Sneakers a lot. I don't know why they're pretending that you'll never walk alone, and High Heel Sneakers are lackluster in this book. But, you know. And um, afterwards, Freddie Beanstalk um, goes, no, Felton goes over to Harold, and he says, no, never do that again. Never pitch any songs. Don't know why, but, you know, they were control freaks like that. And uh, at 3.30 in the morning, the session broke off, and everybody was just pretty depressed. And I uh, don't want to get into it now, but I might do a follow-up video on how they actually did resolve the whole publishing thing and be able to put Guitar Man out um, on the Clambake album. Thank you, everybody, for watching this video. Check out our sponsor, Vintage Gentleman, at the link in the description. Use my link because I do to get a commission from it. I'm sorry about the chair squeak. I'm having a lot of problems on this video today. But thank you so much, everybody. Till next time, may God bless you. See, so has me. Thank you very much.